celebrating the re-release of the first two Dust albums. Yeah. Band, uh, if you didn't know, the band Marky was in before the Ramones, put out two records, uh, Dust and Heart Attack, and they're going to be re-released on April 16th. Can't wait. Yeah. So, uh, you know, 40 years later, why is now the right time to release these albums? Well, we were kids in high school, uh, teenagers, and uh, it's the first band that I was in professionally that put out records. Why 40 years later? Because heavy metal is big. And there was no punk then. And there was, ha- there was hardly any metal in America. Dust was one of the first, I guess, three or four metal bands in America. Well, what, what England was doing was um, uh, exporting their stuff uh, to America, like Black Sabbath, which came out in 1970 on Warner Brothers. So, I mean, there were bands that had heavy metal elements, Blue Cheer, for instance, Summertime Blues, but you couldn't hear the drums well. There weren't that many producers who knew how to produce this kind of music in America. So, obviously, we were influenced by Hendrix, Cream, uh, you know, uh, Deep Purple, all these great groups, Led Zeppelin, and you, and you throw that up uh, in the air, it comes down as an omelet, and that's dust. We, we were, we were ten, 10 years younger than these people. And uh, we were 17, 18, 19 years old in Dust. <clears throat> and we were playing like we were, you know, seasoned musicians on these two albums. So now it's the right time to put it out because we finally the rights uh, were obtained by Sony Legacy. And uh, they were remastered properly. So, and the packaging is great, and, and that's the way to do it, not to, uh, to do it half-assed. If you're going to do it, do it all the way, do it right. So when uh, I found out about this, I was, I was very grateful and happy to be on board to be able to participate in this process, along with Kenny Aronson and Richie Wise. Richie Wise, after Dust broke up, produced the first two Kiss albums. Kenny went on to be a very valuable, well-known sideman, and I ended up hanging out at CBGB's Max's Kansas City, and I uh, started playing with uh, Richard Helen of Lloydoids, and then I was asked to join the Ramones. So there's a lot of history in the group, but again, it's not punk, it's American metal, and uh, that's what I was into before I uh, joined the punk scene in New York City. Yeah, and I think that the people who haven't heard Dust before, will be very surprised, uh, especially by your drumming technique in the records, because it's it's way more uh, precise. You're, you're, there's tons of fills. You're constantly accent, you know, giving accents to the guitarist and the vocalist oh, and yeah. stuff like that. So Different time signatures. Uh, I was able to do that in those songs. I, I was... Uh, I was doing triplets, I was doing quadruples, I was doing double stroke rolls, I was doing 5-4 time changes, 6-4 time changes, 6-8s, Ramones uh, was, is basically 4-4-2-4. Four, four, four. Uh, the songs w- were more than two minutes long. <laughs> and uh, I was able to show uh, my oats, what, what I could do as, as an 18-year-old guy uh, and going to high school because I got left back. So uh, which grade did you get left back? Uh, the last year I had I had to go for, for three years, summer school and night school. Uh, uh, but I fucked around for ten months and I got away with it. <laughs> there you go. So uh, happy ending. Yeah. So that's it. So uh, yeah, within the Dust albums, I'm playing different drumming than I would normally have played with the Ramones. Definitely. And uh, when you think of your personal style of drumming, maybe the quintessential style of, I should say, Mark Bell's drumming, would you equate that more to what people are going to hear in Dust um, or more to the Ramones? Well, the Dust thing is what, what is my peak of uh, my technical skills, the second Dust style. The Ramones was, was the opposite style. Uh, uh, simplicity was better instead of uh, th- throwing in drum fills. You know, the drum fill when I Want to Be Sedated, which was the first song that 
uh, I recorded with Johnny, Joey, and Dee Dee, there's a little drum fill in there after the guitar break. That's all that's needed. Uh, so those songs really don't need that many fills. The, the dust stuff, uh, that, that was required. You had to do that. Sure. You know, to, because uh, it was different music. But uh, I did both. I mean, uh, when I discussed this with Tommy when I joined the group, I said to him, it's, it's just Ringo Starr playing fast with the Be from the Beatles, playing a hi-hat like this, you know, he's doing this, but it's just faster. And, and he understood what I meant. So uh, I would, you know, just listen to the tapes, live show that they recorded, and I learned the uh, Road to Ruin. But Dust, we rehearsed in my parents' basement. We learned the first album there, the second album there. They came out, we played, and wherever we played, we were liked. So I feel that if our manager had more experience and we were on a Sony or a Legacy, or what, et cetera, instead of a Buddha, Kama Sutra, which really uh, catered to bubblegum groups, uh, bands like, you know, Yummy, 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 <laughs> I Got Love in My Tummy, and stuff like that, uh, we would have been, I think, uh, handled more professionally uh, concerning that genre. Uh, 